Honourable members, I like big brains and I cannot lie. <laughs> Tomorrow is supposed to be the hottest day of the year and I'm sure lots of you will want to spend it outdoors if you can, enjoying the sunshine. But for many women, and increasingly men too, the pleasure that the seasonal warmth brings has been ruined by the concept of the beach body. We stretch and slim and starve ourselves for weeks on end in order to look attractive and spare ourselves the judgment of anonymous strangers who are probably, in all honesty, more interested in the positioning of their deck chairs. Would you rather spend six months stuck between the gym and the poultry aisle in the supermarket investing every spare second in an effort to look hot during maybe two days of hot weather, or simply not think about it and head to the beach or the park with a big beer and an even bigger book. Honourable members, I ask you, did Dorothy Parker care about having a beach body? You can't deny that beauty is a powerful force. The studies show, countless studies, that we're drawn to attractive people and being beautiful leads to success. Last year, researchers at the University of Michigan found that attractive people earn, on average, 12% more than their less good-looking counterparts. In the UK alone, the beauty industry is worth 17 billion and forecast to grow by 16% next year. But beauty alone has no enduring power. It's highly subjective. We have no control over whether people find us beautiful or not. And when it comes to agreeing on what pretty means, I'm sure everyone here differs wildly. If you want to take power for yourself and build a career, a life and a reputation, you are going to need the wit and brains to back it up. Brains and beauty is a potent combination. Beauty alone fades and is forgotten. My literary heroine is Eugenia Munster, a character in Henry James' novel, The Europeans. Eugenia uses her wit and wiles to create the facade of beauty. We learn that an admirer once said she was not a traditional hottie, but she carries her head like a pretty woman. Eugenia doesn't have beauty or birth to fall back on, but her brains take her far. She's smart enough to know the value of attractiveness, but also clever enough to know that the world takes you at your own estimation. An intelligent person can learn to behave like an attractive one and assume those advantages, but it's harder for a natural beauty to benefit from brains they simply don't have. Even if an attractive person is extremely intelligent, society's inverse prejudices mean we're reluctant to allow that intelligence to flourish. Model Tyna Willens wrote that her own experience of being beautiful wasn't wholly positive, explaining, many assume that beautiful women use their looks to get what they want, so they must be spoiled, lazy or unintelligent. The pretty girl at the office obviously slept with her boss to get that promotion. Some assume that beautiful women are stuck up or arrogant. Hopefully, people with brains have the intelligence to challenge this prejudice. But it is one that makes life harder for the hot. Look at the high school movie stereotype. The dork in dungarees is allowed to transition into a believably gorgeous person at the end of the film, once they've removed their glasses and shaken their hair out, while retaining their love of physics and Latin. But it's difficult for someone who started off beautiful to convince audiences that they're anything but a bimbo. Currently, some of the most successful people working in the beauty industry are also the smartest. The model is rapidly being outshunned by the blogger. These are the people who represent a wide range of appearance, and body, of appearance and body types and use their intelligence, wit and personality to explore beauty and to experiment with it, and they're making huge amounts of money from it. Would Zoella have become an internet sensation if she sat around waiting for someone to see her beauty and discover her? instead of making her own videos, speaking her mind, and using her brain. Admittedly, the controversy over her ghost-written novel suggests that being brains behind that particular operation was not the most lucrative element. 
But it's interesting that of all the merchandising opportunities Zoella has, she was especially keen to be associated with a book and seen as a writer, not just a model or a beauty expert. Ultimately, it's up to the individual to decide whether they want to explore or exploit their beauty or their brains and see how far it will take them. And the question witty or pretty, when directed at women, diminishes them. To frame the debate as either or is another way to limit women and diminish their presence and power. We're much easier to categorise when we consent to being one or the other, and we're less of a threat. If we're encouraged to think of ourselves as only bookish bints or bimbos, we're never going to challenge the people who are threatened by us and seek to hold us back. But my brains tell me that beauty wouldn't keep me in my old age. If I woke up and suddenly had the body of Beyonce, I would not be rushing to Instagram to fill my feed with hashtag woke up like this selfies. <laughs> or ditching my writing career for a life of pousing and poting, pouting and posing in front of a camera lens. Working with my brain is a privilege and a delight because to paraphrase Beyonce's husband, Jay-Z, it gives me the space to say whatever I like. Working with my body alone would turn me into a cipher, a vessel for the desire, opinion, and judgment of others. In Roald Dahl's Matilda, the eponymous heroine's horrible mother, Mrs. Wormwood, dismisses her daughter's clever teacher with the words, you chose books, I chose looks. The existence Dahl paints for Mrs. Wormwood is dismal and ends in incarceration. She has a massive telly, but no interior life. If that's where prioritising pretty gets you, I choose books every day of the week. Thank you. <laughs>